Today, we're going to make that cool looking book you just saw in the intro, and we're going to do it using Blender and Substance Painter. It's time to get good with Vince. So my initial apprehension with regard to trying out Blender was that the controls, I guess, were completely different. You don't use W, E, and R to move, scale, and rotate like many applications. You don't use left click and shift or control, alt or command on a Mac keyboard to navigate, rotate your camera, pan, zoom. So there's a bit of a learning curve that is a little steeper than perhaps switching from Maya to Moto or to Cinema 4D or to 3D Studio Max. But the application works in the same way as any other with the same options, the same types of commands, your bevels, your extrudes, your booleans, and so forth. It's just a matter of learning Moto's paradigm and how to use these tools. And then when you do, you find that it is just as powerful, if not more so, than any commercial 3D package or software. At the recording of this video, I had only been using Blender for about a week. And since I have a regular 9 to 5, we're not talking about a 40-hour work week. We're talking about maybe 4 or 5 hours in Blender. And I already felt quite comfortable in the package. I had to Google certain commands quite a bit, like how to merge vertices, I think you just saw right there, and how to use the mirroring tools. I was actually using some settings, I guess a configuration, uh, by Heavy Poly. Awesome guy, used to work in Modo all the time. He switched over to Blender. Um, I purchased a tutorial that he had created he creates an NES controller, an old-school NES controller. And he shows the basics of using Blender, all the way from modeling to adding textures to rendering. It's a great tutorial uh, to help you get started. I'll include the link below. And uh, I used his configuration file, so I was using his Pi menus and his shortcuts in uh, this case. I went back to the regular Blender shortcuts and configuration with the exception of left click to select instead of right click to select. The reason I did this was because everything else that I read, uh, every other tutorial that I watched on YouTube used the default Blender configuration, default Blender shortcuts and menus. And I was having a little trouble following with the custom shortcuts and custom Pi menus. That said, the tutorials by Heavy Poly are fantastic, and I recommend you pick some up if you want to learn either Moto or Blender. So at this point, I've got the block out done. I had a little bit of trouble with the mirroring options. I wasn't mirroring directly across the center, so things were a little off. I had to do a little bit of cleanup, merging of vertices, deleting of unnecessary edges, and so forth. But you. You have that same issue in other applications. It's not specific to Blender. And Blender performed very well with regard to um, facilitating cleanup. Quick, easy commands. The application actually runs very fast on my Mac. I don't have a high-level computer or a very powerful computer. By any stretch of the imagination, I have a 2014 Retina iMac. Um, decent video card. The only thing I upgraded really was I put 32 gigs of RAM in here and you know it's not terribly fast when it comes to rendering or any anything that requires I guess you to have a really good video card but it performs well enough and I found that Blender was one of the fastest programs I never experienced any slowdowns I haven't had any crashes yet um, I, I haven't had any freezes yet uh, now it's of note that I'm working on a very simple object here, but even when I finally bring in the textures, I think I bring them in at 2K each. Just, I don't know why, it's overkill. But um, even, even then, nothing really gives me any, any problems. Uh, the application performs just as well, if not better, than um, any other professional-grade 
a much more expensive piece of software that I've worked in. Now, just now you just saw a bevel. It went by a little quickly, but you've seen a few. You'll probably see a few more. There's one right there. I absolutely love the bevel tool in Blender, the way it works. You select your edge or edges, and when you invoke the tool, you simply drag your mouse to make the bevel wider or more narrow, and then you use your scroll wheel to increase or decrease the segments. Now there was something like that in Moto, but you had to use your, your keyboard to do it. I guess you could have set it up to use the mouse, but it uses the mouse uh, by default here in uh, Blender. So you'll see I'm just beveling edges all over the place uh, because it's so easy, it's quick and intuitive. Now I created all of these, I guess you could call them corner accents for the book. There's eight of them all together. I only needed to create one. Um, you can see that a little later on I caught on and decided to simply copy them over, make changes to one of them and copy them over. Even though I was using the heavy poly script to do that this time, uh, it's quite easy with the mirror modifier. I'm looking for a, a quicker way to apply it though. I just want to apply it on the fly when I want to do it once and I don't need symmetry across the object to continue. That was the way that it worked in the heavy poly script so I know I just have to figure out uh, what that script controlled and apply it to my own uh, keyboard shortcuts perhaps. So now we're done with the uh, basic modeling. I'm going to add the uh, details on using a normal map in Substance Painter. There's different ways of doing that. You can create the details in ZBrush and bring in a high poly mesh and bake your normal map using the low poly mesh as the difference mesh. I just like doing it in Substance Painter. Um, it's in the same application. I don't have to worry about exporting a mesh to another application and bringing it in. Uh, it's pretty simple. I, I can get the same kind of details, I think, on a mesh that I would in ZBrush. So I'm not that advanced an artist, so it works just fine for me. Now, you see here I'm working with some alphas. I think these are just the built-in ones. I'm trying to create some designs. I didn't place the mesh very well so my symmetry is off. Uh, if it wasn't I probably could do I could probably perform a lot of these actions using symmetry so I wouldn't have to place so many strokes uh, and I could get them to be a lot more even but you know live and learn. So here I am switching to the 2D view to put in some of these details as it's a little easier than manipulating the 3D view. Sometimes I run into a little difficulty you know you have to do things in the 3D view like there when maybe UV seams are crossing. So now I'm trying to figure out if I can do the same thing on this higher ridge I guess you could call it on the model and I find that it's actually easier to do it in the 3D viewport than a 2D viewport but I'm not sure I think I switch over to 2D viewport either way uh, you know you can paint some pretty decent details in Substance Painter so I try to do some freehand details there for about a minute or two until I realize it looks like complete garbage and uh, actually I left that on there <laughs> even though it did look like complete garbage. That's going to change completely later on, you'll see, because I somehow messed up that normal map. Um, I change a lot of these later on because I'm using these uh, built-in alphas, and I find that they don't exactly meet my needs. I mean, they're nice and all, but they just weren't giving me the look I wanted. So we'll see that in a little bit. So just adding a few more designs. You can add a, uh, quite a few details that you don't have to worry about in the modeling phase. I think I'm using symmetry here. I was using symmetry there. If you saw a little red plane, yeah, you see it every now and then. Uh, the symmetry tools in Substance Painter work quite well. Actually, you only have to do uh, perform your actions. Put your details right there. Yeah, put your details on one side of the mesh and you know, translates to the other pretty well. Don't know why I'm not doing it now. Something might be a little off there. So just using the 
built-in alphas still to create some of the details. You're going to find that's going to change in just a little bit. So here I'm switching over to the 2D view, all 2D view, to put in some uh, details that I didn't want to cross over onto other sides of the same mesh. So now I'm trying to get the texture for the actual book cover right. Nice leather texture. Putting in some stitches as a little detail there. I don't think those make it through to the final design, but um, it's pretty easy to create straight lines so you can make some nice stitches here. I wanted to create a little border around there that I used also on the spine of the book. So, well, here I am trying to add a little dirt, a little grime to the cover using some of the masks or smart masks that Simpsons Painter has. The texture looks actually pretty good here. Maybe a little too much specularity. Uh, so I decide on like a, a drier dirt in the crevices and I kind of like that. I don't think it stays though. So now I have to export my textures so I can bring them back in and bake them again to create a normal map. You, you see that normal map there in the center? How it's kind of messed up, it's off center. And now here I am trying to figure out what went wrong and I try to bake it again and it comes back wrong again. Everything was off center. I don't know exactly what happened there but it gave me an excuse to to recreate it and now look at my alphas those are a lot prettier those are from Jonas Ronegard I think that's how you pronounce his name his ornament alphas kit he's got two of those kits beautiful alphas um, cheap at the price really for what you get I'll put a link to his Gumroad as well as his art station pages in the comments below pick these up uh, along with several of his other products. He makes a lot of great stuff. Smart materials, a lot of great mechanical alphas as well. Uh, see, uh, this is already up to the, the, the value, um, you know, how beautiful that center ornament there looks. Looks a lot better than it did before with these beautiful alphas he provides. So there's a few more areas that were messed up on that center ornament. I gotta paint those in. The reason I exported my maps, um, oh, and then I decided to redo some of these items just to match because they didn't look nearly as good as the center ornament now. So it gave me a, a reason to redo the details uh, that will be in a normal map on these items here. I think they came out looking a lot nicer. Uh, it was well worth the time spent to go back over them and uh, use these much nicer ornament alphas from Jonas Ronegard's collection. So I mentioned a short while ago that I exported my textures. I actually export the um, height and cavity, and I'm trying to remember exactly what I export here. Well, I have to export textures in order to bring them back in. Yes, I export the normal map so I can bring it back in and then bake my cavity and ambient occlusion and position maps so that I can get the smart materials to recognize those details. If you don't have a normal map that has those details in there, because initially I didn't have a normal map at all because I didn't have any normal details. But now that I have a normal map I want the smart materials to recognize uh, those details. So I have to export the normal map from Substance Painter and then bring it back in and put it in the normal slot and then rebake the position, ambient occlusion, world space normal and I believe curvature maps uh, so that I can get those beautiful worn edges and dirt in the crevices and everything like you're seeing now. Uh, there's another way to do it using anchors, named anchors I believe, but I've never tried it. Maybe I will, maybe it's easier so you don't have to export and bring things back in. So I decide to start setting up to export my textures and I realize I forgot to texture these pages so trying to procedurally make the sides look like pages. It, it's passable. Um, not really great, but you know, I, I was trying to make this mainly a project just to learn how to use Blender, so I didn't want to spend too much time on the textures. I wound up spending probably about as much time on the textures as I did on the model, uh, but I think it was time well spent. So I want to make the pages look a bit more 
worn and old. So I use a, bit, a displacement map. Um, on the height channel, actually, I use just like noise to make the pages look a little warped. Now I want to work on this cover a little bit, try to enhance the, the dirt. And I decide to add in some normal detail on the cover that I'm fairly certain I wind up not using because it gets really busy. It's got all the details on the metal parts, so um, I wind up discarding that, I believe. Oh, the materials I'm using now are part of Jonas Ronegard's, uh forgot the exact name of the collection, but it's a metals collection. Uh, same guy who provided those ornament alphas that are, that are so beautiful, uh, created the materials or smart materials that I use for these metals. They're absolutely wonderful. They're very versatile. You can dial in just the amount of grunge, just the amount of dirt, just the amount of rust, how old the metal actually is. And once again, cheap at the price. I can't remember, maybe 20 bucks for 13 to 15 smart materials. It's it's well worth it. You know, a dollar a material for stuff that looks this great. Uh, do yourself a favor. Pick them uh, pick up. Pick them up. So now for some reason I went and I want to change the entire texture for the book. So I go into the Substance Share site. With any Substance subscription, uh, you get it for $9.95 I believe for the first six months and it goes up to $19.95 or $20 a month. Still worth, worth it. You get 30 smart material downloads with that. And so I went into the library and I was looking for a, a leather that was, um, that was different that I thought was better than what I had. Um, looking at this now, I kind of like the color of the other one I used, so I, I bump it up. You can see right there, I, I change it to be a bit more saturated. Uh, and I take away those normal details because I thought they were just a bit much. They were really overdoing it. So now I'm just, once again, trying to dial in some of that dirt on the cover. Kind of figured out. For me, it, I don't know exactly how a lot of the sliders work. It's, it's trial and error. I just try and change them until I get what I want. So now, if you just saw that one little window pop up, there's an application called uh, Hedgehog Connect, and it automatically exports your textures for you over to your application of choice and hooks them up. So I tried to do that. It hooked up the textures for me, but I found that, I believe it was that the renders just weren't looking as good as I would like. And I think it was just the way the shader network was created in Blender. So we'll get back to that in a minute. I come back over here to Substance Painter. I want to make the pages look a bit more worn, a bit more dirty. So just experimenting with different types of noise and dirt. The render looks pretty good actually in the default viewport. If you look at it right there, I changed that center one to gold and took away that glowing center piece. But even in the, um, the viewport, I, guess, I think it's OpenGL would be the term could be uh, the term. Even that viewport uh, it looks really great. I turn on some of the post effects later and take a look at it and they look really great as well. So here I am back in Blender trying to set up my shot. I'm bringing in the textures now one by one. Now it's a bit of a long process, uh, a little arduous, but it's well worth it. Actually, you know what? I'm wrong. I'm right here uh, before that, I was setting up my environment. That's what it was. Now, I believe, yes, now I'm setting up my individual textures. Um, I think the main thing that I didn't like before was that I couldn't get the metals to look like metal. They were way too dull. No matter how I adjusted them, they just didn't get anywhere near shiny enough. Now, they're old metal, so uh, they're going to have some roughness to them in various areas, and it's going to change over the surface. Uh, but now doing it this way, bringing in the textures one by one and mapping them manually, uh, I think it's looking a lot better than it did when I brought in everything automatically. The one-click solution uh, just didn't seem to work as well. If you have any experience at all with a node-based workflow, then you're going to get Blender's material editor. It's not just for materials. I haven't done anything else with it yet, but uh, the note editor, it's super easy, super intuitive to work with. Uh, I mean, I think I watched maybe 20 minutes worth of video on how to hook up textures and the shaders are, and I learned how to use it decently. A lot of room for improvement, but 
uh, I, I understand it at least. So here's the render in the viewport using the render setting. You, know, you have a textured, wireframe, shaded, and this is the render setting. It looks pretty good. I'm trying to adjust the lighting to get the best shot there. Messing around with it. Messing around with my environment textures there that I've got um, working in the node editor. Really easy to adjust. I, I keep messing around with it until I get the lighting that I want. I mean, there's going to be you know, a bit of post-processing on it. Uh, and then I start my render. Uh, the renderer is not fast, but then again, no render on my machine is. So there you have it. Um, the finished product, I think, came out pretty well, especially for my very f first Blender project outside of that NES controller tutorial. Uh, Blender gets two thumbs way up for me, and uh, I think I'll be using it for the foreseeable future. Thanks for watching, and see you soon. So if you liked the video, check out my Patreon page. There you'll find extended commentary, breakdowns, and assets that are all related to the disciplines that I examine in my journeys. While you're at it, hit that like button and subscribe to my channel so you can join me on my next journey to get good. Until next time.